It's the day 34 and I don't need no more Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is doing okay out there and I hope you've had a wonderful week. Um, so today I quickly want to do, um, I guess a Q&A based off um, some teaching questions. So I posted a um, question sticker on Instagram and I asked you guys to ask some questions about teaching because recently I've been getting a lot of those questions. So I said, you know what, let me set some time aside and answer some questions. And guys, um, you guys flooded the question box, which meant I wasn't gonna answer all of those questions on there, but I did feel like it was important for me to at least still come and answer some of those questions on this platform instead. That way I could get through most of them without uh, having my Instagram story looking like ants. <laughs> Anybody got time for that? So if I haven't answered your question here, I would suggest you go back to my Instagram and check if um, your question has already been answered because I've turned all of the teacher questions into an insight, into an insight, into a highlight <laughs> on my Instagram. So go there and check if that question hasn't been answered over here. So I've screenshotted all the questions and I'm going to try and get through most of them very very quickly so i hope you've got your pen and your paper because we're about to answer these questions finally what work should we do to build relationships with our students outside the classroom so i'm guessing this is in reference back to what i was saying about um how do you manage behavior um and i my response to that question was of course working on your relationships with your students and one way to do this is of course to build relationships outside of the classroom i think the easiest way to build a relationship outside of the classroom is just to talk to the students in the hallway when you see them um are you going outside during break times and lunch times just to see how they're getting on when they come to your room to find you are you dismissing them or are you actually taking the time to listen to any of the issues that they have that is how you build relationships and i think that is the easiest way just to build relationships it's not rocket science yeah you don't need to do anything out of the ordinary you're not inviting them to know nando's nothing like that you're just keeping it you're keeping it professional but you're also making it known that yeah i still do care about y'all even though i'm your teacher i still do care so yeah i feel like that one is more self-explanatory as on the job you'll find more and more opportunities to be able to build those relationships how did you prepare yourself for your NQT teaching role? Did you do anything specific over summer? So I did absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. But I think that's also because um, I taught for my whole PGC year, my whole QTS year. I did Schools Direct. So literally from day one I was teaching. So going into my, my NQT year was, it was nothing. It was just like returning to work so let me try and draw some of my experience when i was getting ready for schools direct um so i read up on the curriculum um for my relevant age group i asked in advance what texts they're studying at the school so this is very specific to english if you're doing science maths i can't really ask about i can't really tell you about that because i don't teach those subjects but um yeah so i asked what text they were doing so i could start reading the texts over summer um but more than anything I, after that i didn't do anything guys I, I just went into it i don't think that you can prepare yourself enough i don't think there's anything that you can do to prepare yourself for most things in life and this job is, is one of them apart from reading on the curriculum and asking what they're teaching at the school there's not much you could do how have you created work life balance so i'm very i say this all the time i'm very 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 intentional with my personal life i i'm not here to work a job for the rest of my life i'm not god didn't put me on this earth to be doing agent of capitalism that's not what he put me here for so the things that i hold dear to me in life are my relationships and my friendships with friends family my partner um getting time to see them and i know for a fact if i don't do not get the time to do these things i become a very 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 unhappy person and it's very easy for me to you know spiral into to, it's very easy for me to end up on a downward spiral and for my mental health to be impacted so i don't do i don't commit myself to any parts of work from my work life that can disrupt that that peace and harmony of my personal life so for example contracted hours at my last role my contracted hours were from eight o'clock to three forty. Three forty, my bag is on and i'm leaving and i'm going home if the, especially if there's no work for me to be doing i feel like there's a lot of pressure in workplaces for us to remain even after our contacted times because what most of our colleagues are or we want a promotion or our, our boss is always asking us why are you always leaving excuse me when i sign on that dotted line it says my contracted hours are from mm, 
to hit if there's no work for me to be doing and there's no deadlines so for example of course if there's marking deadlines i'm gonna stay because i know i need to do that but i think it's very unhealthy for us to get into a habit where we're staying late every single day you're not gonna have time for yourself or for your family so i make sure that i constantly check in with myself am i spending time with the people that i need to be spending time with or, or has that been overshadowed by work so i will start to I will start to know that these things are happening when I, I start feeling it in my heart. My heart is very loud <laughs> when I'm not getting what I need, the time I need with my friends and my family. Yeah, it, you will know by my attitude because I, I won't be okay. So I listen to my body, I listen to my heart, I listen to my mind. So listen to your body, listen to your heart, listen to your mind. If you're sick, stay at home. If you need to see friends on the weekend and you haven't seen them for the last four weekends because you've been doing marketing, that's not okay. Put that marking away that rhymed um which did you prefer teaching secondary or post 16 I, I prefer them both i can't really choose between them they are different and they're special for different reasons so yeah i would go back to secondary school but at the same time i think what i really like about post 16 is the freedom the freedom you have as a teacher and there's not as many responsibilities as well did you worry about the level of diversity amongst your colleagues before joining um i'm very lucky i did my pgc and my qts and uh, my um nqt at a school that was most of the stuff were black so i didn't really have that issue um where i'm teaching now there's also a lot of black staff um there aren't a lot of black staff at both places in leadership positions but in terms of the general body of teachers there are a lot of black staff where i was and where i am now um so i really don't have that issue i think this is very particular because of where i live as well so where i live there's just a lot of black people here so yeah um but i do think about it sometimes in the future when i want to go if or, or and when god wants me to go to a, another place I, I do worry that yeah i'm gonna be the only black person but i don't really allow that to stop me or affect me i feel like i'm very unique and happy um and I feel like I've also got to a point where I'm courageous enough to call things out. I'm not scared to say, yeah. So I'm not really worried anymore. Any tips for the interview stage? Just be yourself. They're not looking for a finished product. They're looking for someone who is teachable, someone that is um, willing to grow as well. So they're not looking for a finished teacher, a finished product. If you were a finished product, you wouldn't be going through training. So just be yourself. How strenuous is doing your PGCE whilst doing Schools Direct? I start in September. Um. It was stressful when I had to write essays, um, so it's not really any different to what you would have experienced at university. I think what was stressful for me was managing my work responsibilities and when I had deadlines. Um, so there was only one particular point where there was a huge clash, which was when we had marking deadlines for assessments and um, I had to submit an essay as well for Schools Direct. You just need to manage your time. Um, you either do it or you don't, and if you don't, you fail. So you really have no choice but to do it. So it's about keeping organised, knowing when your deadlines are in advance and working around the free time that you have. Um, you get a lot of free time as a trainee. There's a lot more time on your timetable for you to get things done. So use that time. Um, because it's protected time for you to mark, protected time for you to catch up with your your um, coursework or whatever it is. So make sure you're just, you know, organised and knowing when things need to be in and knowing this well in advance so you can plan your time. Your least favourite thing about your job? Um, I think my least favourite thing about my job... I don't think... Uh, meetings. I hate meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I, unnecessary. This could have been an email. <laughs> How to organise your time, best ways to evidence for your QTS. Um, I don't think you could be taught how to organise your time. You would know how, like, you keep a calendar and you just try and organise your time based on what is a priority. Um, I think it's called Eisen... Hover, Eisenhower, the Eisenhower matrix um, is a system that I've been using for the last two years now. When I have a list of tasks to do, I think about which tasks or what, what I'm about to do is it, well, how much time does it take and how much effort? How much time does it take and what is the output like so in terms of effectiveness? So um, if when I have this, these lists of things to do, I think about which things will take me um, the most amount of time, but have the least amount of effort, um, have the least amount of impact when, when finished, I put those to the bottom of the list. The things that take uh, the, the most amount of time, but have the most amount of impact, I put those first. The things that take a little bit of time, but have the most amount of impact, you see where this is going, right? Yeah, so I use that matrix a lot to think about um 
what tasks need to be done but i don't really think uh, people always ask other people as well how do they organize their time i don't think that can be taught you just need to practice it you need to actually start doing there's no such thing as taking the advice and just taking it and it's just gonna come together you need to actually start doing so start doing so for what i did um i made sure that i kept an electronic folder and as i was going i was just taking evidence so do not leave your evidence to the last minute because you're going to stress yourself out you're going to stress yourself out so make sure that you're doing your evidence as the year is going along especially because they want to see evidence from the autumn term the spring term and the summer term and if you're not based in one school you're not going to be able to go back to your school and say to that school oh by the way um my evidence um i need some evidence for my folder can i come in and just quickly throw a copy some books they're gonna look at you and say no so make sure you're doing it as you go along and that's the best way i would that's the best way i would say that you can evidence keep evidence for your QTS folder. Have regular meetings with your mentor as well and take your folder to them so that they can look for it and see where there are gaps. Know your teaching standards as well because um, then you can cross-reference what you already have in your folder and where you have shown evidence of um, the teaching standards as well. So you yourself will start to know where there is gaps, where there are gaps, so that you can go and fill those gaps as well. Did you have to complete an SKE? So that is a subject knowledge enhancement course before your ITT. No, I didn't because I had an A level in my specialist subject um, and they felt like my my knowledge was up to par. Um, don't take offence if they ask you to do one, it's just so that you can be prepared or if they feel like you haven't got the relevant knowledge but they still want you to be a teacher then they just need you to do some things to brush up on your skills. Don't take offence. You can also ask to do one if you feel like your knowledge is a little bit shaky you can ask to do one as well and then they'll, they'll put you on the course too. Can you do a teaching placement in uni? You can, but you need to organize it individually with the school. So I did some work experience, but I just went back to my old college. I still had links with my um, history teacher at um, college. I, I literally emailed her. Oh, hi, miss. Um, I want to come back for maybe three or four days just to, to shadow you on what you do because I'm, I'm going to be a teacher very soon. And yeah, and yeah, there wasn't any issues. How much flexibility do you get in terms of the type of material you teach in English? So it depends on your school. So my secondary school, I actually planned the whole of the year seven scheme. So everything that they did, all of the, the topics and the themes, particularly in the the spring the summer term the spring and autumn term there was already like a, a skeleton i just needed to create the lessons and jazz it up but for the summer term um there was quite a lot of freedom as to what i wanted to plan and so they literally gave me a topic and the topic was um, shakespearean women and i decided to make a, a, a large scheme of, um basically focusing on political and social issues that we see in society and then relating it back to literature. Sick scheme, I'm so proud of that scheme by the way. I tell, wow, I'm so proud of it. Um, so there, I think there's a quite a lot of flexibility depending on your school. Now at my sixth form, um, I still teach English and there's so much flexibility. I literally teach what I want. Um, of course, I just need to make sure that I am teaching the skills, but as long as I'm teaching the skills, I can basically teach what I want, which is really, really nice, but not nice because it means you have a lot of time to think about what you actually want to do um but yeah i feel like your schools especially now that every school is trying to be trying trying to be anti-racist i feel like there are a lot of contributions you can make to your team um to the team especially when you're having your meetings that it's not so just what you want I made sure to be quite vocal at my last school when we were revamping our um our syllabus and revamping what was included in our curriculum to include writers that looks like me or writers that looks like the kids that I taught. Um so be vocal. There will be a extremely bad vibes if a head of department is saying, hey, you don't want to learn that. Why? Why? Have you experienced racism amongst your white colleagues or from their children? That's a very good question. Uh, yes, I have experienced racism. Um, it's very funny because you get into education with a very optimistic mindset. You believe that this sector is altruistic and it, you know what, everyone's here for the greater good. But you quickly become to realise that not everyone here is for the greater good. And... Um, I think it's it's very sad that George Floyd, it's, it's, 
irritating. It's, it's it makes me angry to think that a black man had to be murdered for schools to start thinking about how anti-racist they are. Even though these conversations have probably been happening for decades, it took that to happen. So it took a uh, a complete explosion of consciousness in society for other groups of society, other parts of society to say, you know what, we too, we need to do something about this. And you know what, it was very interesting to see a lot of reactions and um, a lot of plans being put in place to appear anti-racist. And um, I, as a black woman who is quite passionate about the issues that we face, especially particularly in education, um, when you're calling out certain people, especially as a young black woman who is still a trainee, they don't like that. So I know I'm speaking in code, but I'm speaking in code for a reason. Um, I also had an issue. Do I share this? I'm going to share this, okay? I'm going to share this with y'all. So I had an issue where a student actually laid hands on me and I think it was quite funny to see the reaction from the school and um, particularly knowing that I had other colleagues who were white and they were going through far less issues than me. Their, their issues were could have easily been solved with a little bit of advice about how much fuss was made over them. But I actually had a student lay hands on me. And where was the first, y'all? Like, I literally, yeah, anyway, Shay, I have experienced it. And I think it's so important that you have a network of black teachers who, you know, will listen to you and give you support, but also join a union, okay? We have unions for a reason, because capitalism is a very aggressive and demanding entity, okay? So it doesn't matter if you're sick, doesn't matter if you're not able, doesn't care about your rights. So it's very important that you join a trade, a trade union, a teaching union, so that you can have someone to be in your corner fighting for you okay very important as soon as you become a trainee you can get um you could join a teaching union for free i'm paying like six pounds a month as a fully qualified teacher now join a union okay because you're going to need them at least at, at some point in your career because there's some, some people be moving crazy in this profession they're moving mad for no reason as well. Do you have any experience before teaching at a higher level such as secondary school? So I have no experience of teaching sixth form. I'm just that much of a bad B teacher that they were like, okay, come on, come on, join us in sixth form. Answer that, can you go into teaching without maths GCSE? So when you apply for teaching, they make you go and do an English and maths test. I had to start revising maths all over again. Though I am great at English, I am pants at maths. Um, so I had to do a quite a bit of revision to get my maths up to speed so I can pass this particular test. If you do not pass these tests, you cannot become a teacher. Um, and of course, it depends on your, your subject. If you want to teach maths in particular, you're going to need at least a maths GCSE, uh, a maths A level to teach maths GCSE. If you're teaching maths A level, then you need maths as a, a degree level. You can't. So you need to be one stage ahead of the, the year group that you want to teach. Otherwise, you can't do it okay how did you figure out what age group you wanted to teach so i it's, god is so good because i initially wanted to teach 16 plus um but i only have an a level in english literature i didn't do it at university i went back to, to study to particularly teach secondary school kids also because once you do post 16 you're just refined you can you're confined refined you're confined to that post 16 um sector you can't come down to do secondary and if you want to come down to do secondary you need to retrain again um so it was by chance that i just decided to do secondary because that's what they offered the most amount of support to teach at that level and they have grants to teach at that level so um yeah in my mind i was just going to do secondary school and then work my way up but i got into secondary school i loved it i completely forgot about my sixth form goal and i just now happen to be in a sixth form so that just shows like <laughs> when you state your desires the desires of your heart to go go will really make it happen by the way just let you know um but yeah i just ha haphazardly found myself at sixth form I don't think it matters the age range you teach. You just need to know what you want. I knew I'm not working. I don't want to work with no primary school kids. My main motive was to be able to have conversations with students, but also to affect change. And for me, the best way for me to affect change is with kids who can think for themselves or are starting to critically think for themselves. Primary school kids can't do that. So I ain't got no business with them and I ain't got the patience for that. It's getting experience. Um, essential when applying and writing the personal statement um 
I would say try and get some experience for yourself, not so much for your personal statement, so you can think about if this is actually what you want to do. So you can start asking questions in advance of what teaching actually looks like, especially to the teachers that you might be shadowing. But I don't think it is um, mandatory. It's essential, it's important to have some experience so you know if this is, you're paying £10,000 for this. So at least know if this is what you want to do. Um, but they're not going to turn you away if you don't have experience, if, if that's what you're asking. Your biggest trainee tip, make friends that are at different schools, okay? This will help you jump ship when it's time. Oh, and join a union. How are you coping with teaching during the pandemic on and all? Guys, I hate online teaching. Like, that, that ish is dusty. Um, so I'm glad, I'm actually glad that we're back at school, but I think I've been coping quite well. Um, I don't think my life is still going on as normal with my students. It is a bit annoying because you can't offer support when you need it. I'm, I, I'm a touchy teacher, so like occasionally sometimes my kids they want a, a good church hug and sometimes they need it i have a lot of students that come and see me for personal issues that they want to speak about and when my kids are crying i don't know why i call them my kids because i didn't birth them i call them my kids and when my kids are, are crying it's very difficult to have to be two meters away from them and wear a mask and try and offer support through your eyes only it's very weird um so that bit's been difficult but it hasn't really affected much timetables have changed um and, and now i'm running all over the school instead of being based in one classroom but at least i'm getting my steps in word to lydia dinger is it fulfilling it is fulfilling if this is what you want to do if you have no patience and you're doing this because of job security or because you can get paid quite well quick pretty quickly then you're not going to be fulfilled because it requires a lot and your moments of fulfillment are quite small but when they come they're heavy Oh my gosh, that was the last question, yes! So we finished it quite quick. I'm, I'm very happy about that because I don't want this video to be too long at all. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope as well it answered some questions for you if you're thinking about getting into the teaching profession. Um, please don't be afraid. Um, and make sure you're, you're speaking to teachers in real time as well. So there are many teachers online that you can find there are also lots of support networks that you can start to uh, follow in advance if you're not teaching already. So YBTN and Black Teachers Connect, you can follow them. They're specific um, support groups for black teachers. And yeah, I love them because <laughs> they really helped me out a lot. Um, Pre-pandemic, pre-COVID, they actually used to host a lot of events for networking and for CPD. So they're very, 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 very useful. And I would suggest that you follow them um, for when you actually become a teacher. But that's it for me. Um, I'm gonna go, because it's Saturday night, so I'm gonna pour myself a cheeky drink because I've done all my marking for my assessments. And I'll see you guys soon for another video.